Hello, in this video I'm going to go over the polymorphic type system that I uh, just implemented in the recently renamed Qualia, which was formerly known as Agent. And I'll explain why I renamed it Qualia. So to start, we're going to need the same components that we needed before. An agent, a system, we're going to need an emitter. Uh, you can see that what's different now is that the system takes in a list of Qualias. And a Quilia is just what I call um, anything that has a position uh, and can move over time. And so things that fall under this categorization are particles, agents, and vehicles, um, which are the, um, the types that I'm planning on having in the first version of Quilia. So um, this time, so say we wanted to create our agent settings. So you can see now agent actually takes in this new parameter P for particle. So an agent is actually an extension of this other type that is a particle. Um, I just dragged out another agent component, uh, a particle. So a particle um, is just a, you know, would be called a point, but it also can move. Um, so it's going to have things like a minimum initial velocity, a maximum initial velocity. This is, um, you know, how, you know, what's the random values that, that you know, Quilia is going to choose from to, for the initial velocity of that particle when it's emitted. Um, you could set an initial acceleration, um, of course the lifespan, mass, a body size, and a history length. And then by having a mass and a body size, it kind of goes against the traditional um, definition of a particle, which is kind of this massless, um, sizeless point in space. Um, but uh, uh, for my purposes, it's, it's useful to have a mass and a body size. So if we plug the particle into the agent component, um, you can see now it's valid. And an agent component is just an extension that has additional parameters like a maximum speed. So this is how far it can move in a single time step. A maximum force. This is going to affect its ability to turn. Um, so when it's reacting to different forces, um, a higher maximum force will allow it to kind of turn at a faster rate. A vision radius uh, says how far it can see in its environment. It can look at other particles or agents um, or other things in the environment, like uh, you know points or, or uh, paths. And then also a vision angle. So this is kind of how far around um, you know its its current velocity. So kind of from its you know where it's where it's going, how far around it it can see. So for, if it's set to 360, you can see in a sphere around it. Um, so now you can see if I plug that into the system, you have a valid system, and we still need to do um, other things in order to see our uh, quilias. So here we're going to deconstruct the system, and then we're going to deconstruct the quilias um, so that we can see its position as a point 3D. Um, next, you're going to need your timer, and you need to plug it into your agent, or to your engine, and your system. And then you also need your boolean toggle to reset it. So we set it to false, and we see that the particles, uh, you know, are being emitted from the point with a random initial velocity that's between uh, these two values. So, and right now they're just acting as particles. So if I were to just plug in um, the particle settings, it's going to work just as well because we're not doing anything agent related. Um, so. Let's also see, let's see if I can show uh, how you might use these initial velocities. So if we create two vectors, and we say both of them are going to start with a 0 point, um, let's say 0 0.15 for z, and let's say a 0 0.15 for x as well, the x and y. Here I'm going to turn these negative. Well, I'm going to. I want these particles to be, um, you know, initially given a velocity that's generally upwards, but also in, um, you know, in some direction in the x and the y. So if I show, if I display these vectors, I need a x y z point construct point. If we look at these two vectors that I've created. see 
their initial velocity is going to be somewhere in between these two values. So as I plug these in, you can see now the, the particles are only traveling upwards. So what can you do with particles? Um, you, know, you can't use any of the agent forces because those require perception of its environment, but you can use these particle forces. So one of them would be just apply a custom force. So here I'm going to apply a custom force um, downwards in the z direction. And I'm going to make that also, let's say, a 0.15. And I'm going to plug in my Q. And now so since this is actually a particle, uh, what's coming out of here you can see are even our particles. So if I plug it into here, which is, takes in particles, uh, you can see that now they're being now they're reacting to that um, force. Uh, obviously, this is just too strong for what I wanted. So let's just set this to 0 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.1. Okay, there we go. So now they're given that initial velocity upwards, um, but then being kind of dragged down by this gravitational force. And I'll also extend their lifespan so that you can see it uh, better over time and also give them. Uh, a position history so that we can keep track of their positions over time as well. All right. So now it's acting almost like a, a fountain. Right? They're given this initial velocity upwards, and then they're pull, pulled down by gravity. Um, another thing you might do to particles is contain them. So you can contain them within any environment. It could be a BREP. I'm just going to use a box for the sake of speed. And I'm going to give that box a bounds of 15 units. Uh, and then we need our environment, our access line box environment. And now we just plug in our particle. And you'll see that hopefully they should be contained. I think that they're whacking out down there because they were already outside of that environment. Let's just look at the wireframes of our environment. So now the particles are reacting to the edges of that environment, and in this case they're just being bounced off of it. What's an agent then? So I could again, um, let's see what happens if we try to use an agent force like separate. Um, so separate takes in agents. So if we try to plug in our uh, particle, these are just particles you can see as they come out here, they're particles. Um, and I'm going to use a neighbor's component as well so that we only get um, neighbors that are within a certain range. Um, well, first I'll just show you. Um, for the separate force, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because um, that particle doesn't have those fields like a maximum force or a vision angle that's, gonna, that's required for a separation force to work. Um, however, if I instead plug in my agents and I reset the scene, now that separation force is working. You can see they're, they're actually behaving differently. And they're kind of going all wonky down here because... I didn't set my um, system to be contained in this environment, so let's try that and reset the scene. So now they're being separated, but also um, they're bouncing off of those edges, which is a particle force. So anything that you can do to a particle, you can do to an agent. Um, and so now let's also try that. Uh, now they're being separated from everybody, but let's just separate from ones that are kind of nearby and see what happens. So you can see they're obeying those particle forces, but also this additional agent force. I think that about covers it. Hopefully it gives you a good understanding of uh, what you can do with this new polymorphic type system. Um, poly is, polymorphism is, is a software engineering term, but uh, it really you know, it goes down to its Latin root. So poly mean, meaning many, and morphic meaning forms. So um, these quilias can take on many forms. Um, so right now it's just particles and agents. In the future I, I plan on adding uh, vehicles which might have things like wheels and sensors and they kind of 
uh, operate and, and decide things in a different way than a particle or an agent might. Um, so that's something I'm planning on having in the first release. In the future, you might also have things like people or cars um, that operate on an even higher level. Um, but they'll all be able to be used in this same um, system, in the same kind of component architecture uh, as you see here because of this polymorphic type system. Um, so there you go. Hopefully you kind of understand um, this new system and, and you see the potentials uh, for where it can go. So thanks for listening.